Teachers are viewed as some of the biggest doers of good in all occupations, right up there with nurses and doctors. But what if I told you that our image of them was altered from reality? Hundreds, if not thousands, of teachers in the United States break the law on a daily basis. Who knew that breach of contract fit right in between math class and lunchtime? This statement definitely shatters our image of those who mold the minds of our children. However, it is not without merit. An Individualized Education Plan, or IEP, is a part of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and is a legally binding document between those covered by the Act, their guardians, and their instructors. Not only those with a mental disability are qualified for an IEP, any learning disability is covered, as well as intellectual giftedness. To clarify, an IEP is a specific written out plan for a child's education. It highlights the child's interests and strong points, as well as areas in need of improvement. The plan is a collaboration worked on by the parents, teachers, special education specialists, and any other faculty members deemed necessary. It's basically a cheat sheet on what's needed for the child to succeed. Now, teachers often work with class sizes of up to 30 children, and catering to each individual need can be troublesome. But some students specifically are not in need of as much hands-on assistance as found in a special education classroom, but need some alterations in a regular classroom. This video will be focusing on the educational needs of students with an Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. In the fourth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual published by the American Psychiatric Association in 1994, Autistic Disorder is defined by the onset prior to three years and the presence of deficits or unusual behaviors within the three domains, reciprocal social interaction, communication, and restricted repetitive interests and behaviors. There is no known cause of ASD, and although there is strong evidence to suggest that there is a genetic factor, no genetic marker has been discovered. There is high-functioning autism spectrum disorder, such as Asperger's syndrome, in which those affected have average or more commonly above-average intelligence but struggle in communication and social skills. Characters in popular media have been diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome, such as Max on Parenthood, Sheldon on The Big Bang Theory, and Sherlock Holmes. Low-functioning autism spectrum disorders can more physically manifest, resulting in repetitive behaviors, rituals, and other odd body movements. In many instances, those with an autism spectrum disorder have sensitivity to sensory input, such as light, sound, and touch. Imagine sitting in a classroom filled with kids and having a terrible headache. The sounds of multiple conversations occurring, the glaring of the overhead light, and a seat that you just can't seem to get comfortable in. Now imagine trying to overcome all the distractions of these sensory inputs and trying to focus on your work. This is what it's like every day for a student with an ASD who has hypersensitivity to sensory input. Accommodations such as adding a cushion to the seat and maintaining a calm classroom atmosphere when possible can increase their ability to function exponentially. People afflicted with autism spectrum disorders also have a high reported rate of synesthesia in which sensory input is interpreted by the wrong sensory processor. For example, they can see music or hear colors. They may also have selective hearing in which they only pay attention when specifically addressed or only listen to what they are interested in. The University of Cambridge reports that there is a chromosomal region to which synesthesia is linked in which autism is also linked. To put an IEP into context in terms of legality, we can compare it to a restraining order. A restraining order will tell you to stay 500 feet away from a person, for example. You can probably get away with going within 470 feet, but if the person complains, you have breached the contract, which is breaking the law. If you follow some parts of the IEP, so even to the best of your abilities, but disregard some parts, you have also breached the contract, which can lead to lawsuits against the school district. One instance in which legal action was almost taken against the school district was in the instance of a child I tutored named Patrick. Patrick is a student who is now 14 years old and a freshman in high school. I tutored him for five years in all subjects. Patrick has Asperger's syndrome and is high functioning. His condition was undiscovered for a large part of his childhood, but now that I'm informed as to the symptoms, I can definitely understand. He would only eat white macaroni and cheese, never the orange kind. His grilled cheeses had to be cut into triangles, never into strips. He loved to learn about history and science, but couldn't care less about what I had to say about reading and math. He learned how to play the piano at a rapid pace, but could never pick up on how to share. He loved ice cream, but only if there were sprinkles. When he felt extreme emotions such as happiness, anxiety, or fear, he would flap his hands close to his sides. He was particular, enjoyed rituals, and hated change. 
Successfully implementing an IEP for Patrick has gotten easier over the years, but was a huge struggle at first. Autism spectrum diagnoses are more common now, but weren't so a few years ago. 13% of children grades K-12 through had IEPs under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act in 2012, which translates to over 6 million in the United States. In an average grade size of 300 kids, this equates to over 35 IEPs per grade. Chances are you sat in the surrounding area of at least one person with an IEP at your high school graduation. At least three of these IEPs per grade are for children with autism spectrum disorders. Many teachers disregard autism spectrum disorder students because there seems to be no decrease in intelligence, but rather social awkwardness and sometimes a higher chance of being disruptive in class. Patrick's IEP stated that he could leave class if he felt overwhelmed, be put into the same group for group work every time, organize his notebook in his own way even if the class had a requirement, and being able to have a copy of every textbook used at his home. Many teachers are compliant now, but viewed his individualized needs as a nuisance in earlier years. His mother spent countless hours fighting with the school board, individually meeting with teachers, and at times even hiring lawyers to look into options for Patrick. The administration would even cancel her meetings without telling her. Every mother wants their child to succeed, and his mother was dedicated to the cause. But what about less knowledgeable, motivated, and well-resourced parents? The CDC reports that between $40,000 and $60,000 are spent on intensive behavioral therapy, equating to more than a year's tuition at an Ivy League school. Why should a parent have to fight for their child's rights protected under a federal act? As future educators of America, you will learn all about IEPs, different instances of students with special needs, and how to run things in a classroom. What I hope you bear in mind is that it is important that every student has their needs met in your classroom. Following an IEP is not only mandated by law, but is clearly written out and can be consulted at any point. You should be gauging your success as a teacher on the successes of each of your students. Sensitivity to each student's needs is your responsibility, and if they have an IEP, you are legally obligated to do so.